Hey, what's up, guys? Blaine Duncan here from Halloween Lives, the podcast of Michael Myers, your weekly source for Halloween franchise information. We're the only podcast out there that's doing this 100% Michael Myers, 100% of the time. And you're probably wondering why you're seeing a video right now. We only launch these things or put these things out on Friday. But guess what? We had something really cool happen. We were able to line up a guest and we had to get this thing out sooner than our normal Friday episodes. So I'm really excited to bring him in in just a minute. Uh, before we get to that, just wanted to say thank you once again to our sponsors at Spook House Studios. Go check them out. Support the podcast. They have a link right now or a, a code right now for Halloween Lives. If you use Halloween Lives at checkout uh, at spookhousestudios.com, you get 10% off your orders, and that all goes back to support the podcast. So go check out Spook House Studios and uh, give them some love, and in turn, you're giving us some love. Guys, like I said, I am super, super excited to bring this guest on. Um, it's somebody that I've been chatting with for quite a while now. And if you don't know who he is, you're either living under a rock or you're living in a cave in Afghanistan or something, because I promise you every single one of you is going to know who it is. Um, so tonight, we are going to be talking with the host of Horrors Hollowed Grounds. We are going to be talking with the co-host of The Thing with Two Heads, and then, of course, the owner of, uh, it's going to be the Convention All-Stars. You guys know him, Mr. Sean Clark. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> Thank you Hello. so much for coming on. Uh, yeah, thank you. Uh, this no is a problem. Pleasure, for me, pleasure for me, pleasure for the fans to get a chance to talk to you. Before we get into age 45, uh, just a minute about your collection, man. Walk me through this. When did you become a fan of horror? When did you start collecting horror? And what does that look like for you? Uh, I, I've been a fan of horror as far back as I can remember. And, um, I've kind of been a collector as far back as I can remember from at least, I guess I wish I would have collected toys more when I was a kid. I didn't really know their value. Um, I've spent a lot of my life trying to track down and rebind a lot of things I had as a kid, but, um, records I started collecting immediately like age seven um so i have a huge vinyl collection as you can see some of it behind me um but yeah i've always had kind of a collector's mindset and you know as i've progressed in my life and my finances i've taken it to higher extremes <laughs> so no, that's yeah. that's cool, man. So what I what I love about your collection, and, and I just watched a video recently uh, from the Grim Life Collective, and I know that's a little bit of an older episode that they did where they came in and kind of toured your house, and I uh, got to see quite a bit of your collection. But what I love about your collection is you're unapologetic about it. It's stuff that you love, and like you kind of touched on, it's nostalgic stuff. It's stuff from your childhood, things that maybe mm -hmm. to most people it might not mean anything, but to you it's obviously a big deal. Do you have in you know? I, it's probably hard to to kind of quantify this, but I mean, do you have a, a like top three favorite things from your collection that you can just think of right off the top of your head? My poltergeist clown, uh, Ajax's warrior's vest from the warriors and probably Ace Frehley's vest from love gun tour stage worn. That's awesome. That's badass. So, so obviously you're a big kiss fan. Um, yeah. you probably grew up in the era of when they were starting to get really big. Right. That's awesome. Yeah. I, I'm a huge <laughs> kiss fan myself. You know, you hate to see them. obviously, uh, you know, it's the, the end of the road tour going on. It seems like it's been going on for like 10 years now. Um, but I, I just, I had an opportunity to see them whenever they came through. I'm from Minneapolis. Just saw them come through the last time they were through and great band. Talk about the poltergeist doll though, because my understanding is there's only two of those things in existence. You own one and Zach Baggins from Ghost Adventures owns the other. Talk about how'd you get your hands on that thing? There was actually four. There was four made for the film. There was two happy faces and there was two evil faces. Um, one of the evil face ones just surfaced and sold on auction like two months ago for $675,000. Wow. Insane yeah. amount. Yeah. Um, Zach has the other one, the other happy face. Um, his came from, it's been, <clears throat> it had been hanging in planet Hollywood in Vegas for over 20 years. <clears throat> Excuse me. And they're finally kind of 
phasing out the planet Hollywoods. So um, he picked that up an auction. He got a spiel compared to what the last guy paid. Um, but uh, the third one, no one knows where that one is. Um, or excuse me, the fourth one. Uh, and how I know this is I actually, I had seen a photo. Um, I met a guy uh, at a convention who said he grew up with the son of the woman who made them for the film and had been to their house back then when they were doing them. And he had a photo. He showed it to me on his phone from their living room of all four of them sitting on a couch. Wow. And I've begged this guy for this picture. And this, this was probably six years ago. Well, I just saw him and this was in Canada. So I just saw him last weekend at fan expo in Toronto. And I was like, dude, and he gave it to me. So oh, really? Oh, awesome. yeah. Well, there's, it's a whole story behind it because it's not really his photo. He was trying to get me in touch with the guy who was going to give me the permission to take the long story short. He gave it to me. I just can't really show it until I get permission from the other guy. I'm trying to be respectful. But the one thing I didn't realize the first time I saw it six, seven years ago was there was two evil clowns and not the transition head. There was a transition head that went to auction a few years ago. It was unused. It, it was made for the film, but wasn't used in the film. But it was just the head only, not on a body. This was two, clearly two final evil heads. So there's another one out there somewhere, maybe. Um, or it got trashed. I don't know. Right. That's incredible. But, yeah, I got mine from the son of the woman who made them from the film. Uh, he auctioned it on eBay way back in the day before people knew what they were worth. And I I stole that. I got to say, I, I, I almost feel bad now what I, I mean, but, you know, <laughs> but well, I, right, what man. I've paid for other things, it's hard to feel too bad. Well, here's the thing that I think is awesome is like, it's going to, it's not, it's not sitting in some museum. It's like, it's your collection, which I think is super cool as a huge horror fan. Mm -hmm. And I'm a collector and my collection is obviously nowhere near what you have. But I mean, there are things that we collect that there's a reason why we love them and to be able mm -hmm. to display it in your own house and to get to enjoy it. And I'm sure every time you walk into that room or walk through that area of your house, you look at it and it's got to bring some joy to your face, right? To know that you are one of the few people who actually has this thing in their possession yeah it's it's uh it's one of those things you eventually start to take for granted but then every once in a while you stop and you look and you think about it and you go oh wow that's so cool <laughs> you know that's um, that's awesome i just hope at some point in my life i'm able to share it uh beyond the videos you know like uh, do some, I, I, I want to do something, some sort of museum or something. I don't want to do just the museum because I feel museums are kind of boring. Mm -hmm. Like icons of darkness is really cool in LA. I mean, it's the guys rich, uh, rich, uh, uh, Oh God, I can't remember. That starts with a C rich Cornell, not Cornell, something like that. Anyway, rich. I can't remember his last rich name. Anyway, C, it's this, yeah. It's this guy's collection and it, it, it's bonkers, bonkers. Um, but, you know, it, 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 I, there needs to be another element to it. I, I, I want, I mean, I kind of like the planet Hollywood idea of a restaurant, but I think where it suffered was it didn't have a theme. Mm -hmm. it, it, like if you had a horror restaurant or barcade or something. I don't know. I, I there would be, it would be, I want to, I'd love to have it on display somewhere, someday, some type of thing like that, you know, where it can be appreciated by others and seen by others. I don't know, you know, down the road right now, I'm too busy to even consider it. Dude, you, you are one busy man. There's no question about that, but that sounds, that sounds awesome. And it sounds like something that I mean, there are so many awesome horror fans out there that would love to support something like that. And um, like you kind of said, nobody's done anything like that as far as like the horror restaurant sort of thing and to be able to display all those but things. There's so horror themed restaurants, but they're not, you know, they're not to they're that not, extent. Not to that extent. No. Right. 
Right. Yeah. No, that's awesome, man. So let's talk a little bit uh, before we get into Halloween and talking about Halloween, 45 years of convent, uh, terror convention. Let's talk a little bit about horrors, hollowed grounds. How did you start that thing up? I'm a huge fan. I've been watching those videos forever. Um, I actually, you know, just watched the one with Tommy Lee. That was awesome. Getting a chance to tour trick or treat studios. Um, mm-hmm. That was sweeter. That was actually just on your YouTube channel, but uh, horrors, hollowed grounds. Let's talk about that for a second. Where did, where did that start? How did that start? Walk us through that. It technically started in 1993 when I went to uh, Pen- Pittsburgh um, for my first out of the state convention, which was the 25th anniversary of Night of the Living Dead. It was called the Zombie Jamboree. And they had it across the street from the mall from Dawn of the Dead. And we were so excited because Dawn of the Dead was the movie that we loved the most from that trilogy. At that time, it was just a trilogy. And uh, when we went to that mall in 93, it looked exactly like it did in the film. The only thing that had been changed was the ice skating rink had been removed and a food court had been put in. And when I walked in there and I looked around, I felt like I walked in the movie. And it it was this weird sense of nostalgia that kind of overcame me. And I like I, I've said this a thousand times. It, it feels like walking into your childhood home, or maybe your elementary school. You know, your high school. You get this feeling like you've been there, but you haven't. You know, you've just seen it so many times. You know where everything is, and and I was just so kind of. Uh, I guess there was like a little bit of a euphoria, you know, that set in. I was just, I I, I was like, man, I want to do. I want more of this. I want to see more of this. And so then I started seeking out places. Now, back then, pre-internet, it was not easy. I mean, I would literally drive around neighborhoods, you know, in, in LA looking for things. I mean, it was, it was not, it was not easy, um, right. but it was fun. And that was my favorite part. And still to my favorite part to this day is the hunt, you know, I like to be the guy to find something first. And that's very, very difficult now because everybody, everybody with social media, you can find it like that. But every once in a while, I still find things that people miss, you know, these other YouTubers who do location videos, you know, some will even be as cocky as to put up complete filming locations. And I watch it and I'm like, no, you miss this, you miss this, you miss this, you know, um, so I, I mean, I, I just, it's kind of funny, but <clears throat> some of those guys are my friends, um, you know, and, and I, and I appreciate the passion, but for me, well, the difference I think is for them, it's a job. That's how they're paying their bills. For me, it's a hobby right. and I put a lot more time and passion into it. I'm not looking for just the clicks. I'm looking to do the best I can and cover it as, as thoroughly as I can and make it as interesting as possible for the person who watches it, you know? Yeah. Um, and I feel like the people that comment on my videos always point that out. Like, you know, like I just put up uh, American world in London yesterday and everybody is like, dude, this is hands down the most thorough version you know, you nailed everything, blah, 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 with the exception of, I guess I called Wales, England. I said, <laughs> Wales, England. How dare you? Dude, I had, I had no idea. <laughs> it was right. like, I flew into England. Somebody drove me to Wales. I didn't know I went into a different country. <laughs> right. I, um, I, I am a dumb American. What can I say? Now you know. Yeah, now you know. Yeah. I, I wouldn't know any different either. No, that's that's awesome. And that's the thing. I, I would agree with everything that you just said about like the videos that you're doing is, you know, the professionalism and just the detail that you're going into is – it's really unlike anything anybody else is doing. And you can tell it's a passion project for you. And mm-hmm. and maybe you're right that a lot of these people are, they're trying to, you know, make money after this or do whatever where for you, this is like, this is, you love this. Right. And I think well, that's I really take, I take so much time putting an episode together where a lot of these guys will go film it on Friday, upload or edit it Friday night and upload it on Saturday. Um, and and that's cool. You know, they're, they're vloggers, you know, or whatever. That's their content. You know, like Adam, the woo, who's a good friend of mine, he's a daily dude, you know, 
And so he has a schedule to keep and right. you know, that's his thing. Well, you know, his is quick and dirty. Mine's more, you know, and he'll even admit it. He'll even say like when we've gone out and shot things together, he'll even say, well, Sean's making his own video. You know, his is going to be way more intricate, you know? Right. Yeah. And, and, and that's cool. You know, it, it, it's not a competition, you know, well, there's a little bit of competitive spirit, I guess there, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm just, I'm doing it for myself, you know? Yep. And, yep. and, uh, I just want to be happy with the finished product. You know, I've been like the lost boys one people have been stalking me about, my issue with the Lost Boys one is I keep uploading it and it keeps getting flagged for copyright stuff. So yeah, I, I, sure. I put it up. So I keep having to take it down and re-edit it. And it got to the point where it's happened like five times that I kind of just got frustrated and tucked it away for a bit. And I've yeah. been focusing on other ones that I feel, you know, I want to get out sooner because maybe they haven't been covered or they haven't been covered as much, or I want to be the first guy to get something done. Everybody's done Lost Boys. I think mm -hmm. mine's going to be the best one, in my opinion. I mean, I got Alex Winter in there with me uh, at you know one of the locations. I mean, it's it's going to be really really good. But at the same time, I'm in no hurry. Like I I would rather get some of these other like the one I'm working on right now, which I'm hoping to have out uh, have out sometime next week maybe by Thursday. Uh, I don't think anybody's ever done. And it's a huge movie and it blows my mind that, I mean, I've seen little bits or somebody, I went to this place, I went to this place, but I mean, dude, I did the whole thing and, and it was a monster and, that's awesome. and I got a feeling that's going to be a real big video for me, but I've been busting my ass on it. Uh, and I want to get it out first because I'm afraid someone else might be doing it right now. You know what I mean? Right, Steal exactly. my thunder. Yeah, exactly. Oh, that's <laughs> that's cool, man. Like I said, it's it's very clear that it's a it's a passion thing for you, and I think that is what separates you from so many other people. Is it's there, there's a difference there, and there are some great there are some other YouTubers that do a very good job with it as well. So nothing against them, but yeah, there yeah. is something different about what you what you're doing. Yeah, I mean, well, like uh, my my buddy Scott on tape. You know, he, he, he does, oh, my thing just made a sound. Sorry. Um, <laughs> he, he does a lot of cool stuff and, you know, and, and he's, you know, he's very passionate, uh, a world of, 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 of Mika, uh, is it Micah, Mika? I always say it wrong. Hey, it's Micah world of Micah. Mm -hmm. Um, like I just got done watching his Halloween ends video, uh, he put up today, um, you know, the, I love it with Tampa J, like Adam. I love it when they, when, you know, you can tell that it's something they're passionate about. A lot of them, admittedly, all, a lot of them will do a lot of filler because they're vloggers or whatever. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't know if, you know, right. uh, so that they're trying to keep the clicks up. But, but I can, you can tell when somebody's passionate about something, you know, Absolutely. it comes through in the video. Yeah, you, you can tell, you can see, you know, it, it's not just every, how cool is this? Mm -hmm. How cool, you know, right. yeah, I, you right. know, it's like when you can, you can tell when somebody's really like stoked, you know? Absolutely. So. No, that's, that's cool. And you did. So we're going to talk about Halloween here in a second, but I got to ask you a personal question because it's, it's one that, so you got to go to the location where session nine was filmed at, which was Danvers, uh, I think state. My favorite uh, episode. Dude. Oh my God. I love it. I am such session nine is a top three favorite movie of mine. Absolutely love that film. And you actually not only went there and filmed there, but you even got the broken glass from that. I think it was a door with the, the American flag. Is that right? Yeah, I don't know where it is. <laughs> oh, don't tell me that. I, I remember taking it, but I can't okay. find it. Um, okay. I'm, but I took a lot of stuff from Danvers. I've got, wow. I've got a whole envelope full of paperwork and and canceled checks and really? uh, all kinds of stuff. Um, I did take uh, the one of the arms that you know the 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 row he runs past of all the yeah. the yeah, arms the, the suits yeah the, yeah, yeah yeah I ripped off one of the I have one of the arms Dude. and the very last shot of the close up of the the picture of the baby yeah the, the what was on the wall behind it 
uh, I ripped that off and I have that. <laughs> oh so the, the baby picture was gone, but behind it was like a picture of like, um, it was like magazine articles. And right, one yeah. of them was like a baby doll head and it had all that, the red stuff, you know, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have that. Oh, so. dude, that is so awesome. Good for you. Yeah, I got that. in that building twice. Um, really? Two different times. Yeah, I, I flew to Danvers two different times. Uh, I went back because the first time we only got to spend, I think we only spent a couple hours in there. And the last time we probably spent five, six hours in there. Like, dude, that place was humongous. It oh, was like, uh, it. like, it was like six levels. It was like four stories and two sub levels. And it's just, it was, cr- it, it was just crazy being in there. Um, right. And I became obsessed with that movie. I saw it in the theater and I just was like, dude, I got to go there. And I started <laughs> right. doing research online and I came across this guy who was an urban explorer. His name was John Gray, not the John Gray that did like Pit of Horror and Fear Fest and all that. Not that guy. Okay, totally yep. different John Gray, same name. And we connected online and apparently he was getting hit up by tons of people because of session nine. And I pestered him and I somehow talked him into meeting up with me and helping me get in there. Um, and uh, without his help, I would have never got in there because sure. not only was it, it was completely boarded up and, and sealed up, but they had 24 hour security that, that, drove the premises because so many people were trying to get in there. I mean, they kind of say that in the movie, you know, they're trying to keep people out, you know, and it's like people, people try to get in, you know, I mean, it's, it was true. Right. Because urban exploring is a, is a big thing. And, uh, so it what an adrenaline rush it was getting into that place. Dude. Yeah. I'm, I'm jealous as hell, bro. (laughs) Like I I can't even tell you, like, like I said, first off top five favorite movies for me, maybe even top three. I just, I love that movie. I think if people haven't seen session nine, it's one of the most underrated horror films that's out there. So well done. Just a super creepy, creepy ass film. Like I think about that scene where there he's down in the tunnel and he sees the shadow like that. It gives me chills every time I watch that scene, Dude, but did you have any, imagine being in that spot. I was standing right there and I'll tell you what, that entire building was pitch black. If you turned your light off, you couldn't see your hand in front of your face. It it was sketchy. And it, I mean, it, it was so creepy being, I, cause it was such an adrenaline rush. I would literally turn my light off and just stand in the dark and just like, try to get freaked out. Cause it, it was just fun. Um, but, uh, I, I'm sure you bought the Blu-ray, right? The Absolutely. special. Oh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. Yep. I did all the bonus features for that. I did all the interviews wow. with, with cool. all the cast and crew. Yeah. 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 Awesome. I, I, I spearheaded that one. I bet I be- I begged scream factory for that one. I was like, dude, I, my, <laughs> one of my favorite movies. I have yeah. to do it. Absolutely. So. No, it, it is. It's a great, it's a, it's an awesome <clears throat> film. I highly recommend it. If people have not seen it, uh, it's, it's way underrated and does not get nearly enough love that it, that it deserves. And I can sit here. The and only about- guy we didn't get was the guy who played Gordon. Oh yeah. And yeah. I, I wish I, I would love to meet that guy. His performance right. is so good in that movie. It is. It's fantastic. That, and that's the thing is the acting is so well done. I mean, it's very believable and, and you're oh. so confused, you know, we didn't so get confused. Caruso either. He turned oh, us down. Is that right? Okay. All right. Yeah. Sure. The other cool. guy was in another country. But okay. All right. And yeah, the the uh, uh, the, the other guy, and I'm now I'm blanking on his name. What his character in the film, the uh, the Scottish guy, but he was in Braveheart. I think that's the only other movie I can even think of that he was <laughs> he was in. Um, yeah, I can't remember the actor's name, but he yeah. played Gordon. Gordon. Yes. Thank you, Gordon. Yep. Um, just a just an awesome awesome actor great did a great job with that film obviously and um like i said i can i can talk to you all day about session nine because there's just yeah. so much to talk about and dissect <laughs> that, this, but. the session nine podcast wait a second and in your yeah. intro didn't you say that it's nothing but michael myers i know and that's the thing this is the first episode <laughs> this is the first episode and, and this is a special episode and i probably didn't go into it enough in the opening <laughs> but there's going to be some things that come up later in this episode that you guys are not going to want to miss some special announcements regarding I'm pulling it out 45 okay all right well let's let's get into it let's let's move on from session nine let's start talking halloween because that's what everybody's here to listen to sean you are the man behind the halloween 45 years of, of terror convention um, peter mullen 
Peter Mullen. There you go. Okay. Okay. That's that's the that guy. It was going to drive me crazy if I didn't look it up. <laughs> no, that's, okay, that's so Peter back Mullen. to what you were saying. Yeah, no, no, no. So so Halloween, forty five years of terror. We're getting that the end of the month now. We're in September, obviously. Uh, the end of the month, we've got the, the conventions coming up. My brother and I are going to be out there. We're stoked as hell to to get out there and meet all these awesome actors and see all the super cool vendors. Uh, but tell us a little bit about it first off. I'm sure everybody is well aware, but tell us a little bit about the convention and how you're involved with it. Um, well, I was dumb enough to get involved with it back in 2003. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> and every five years, they pull me back. Uh-huh. Um, I keep swearing I won't do it again. But uh, at this point, I'm pretty much pledging H50. That's it. I'm yeah. tapping out. Right. I'll do the 50th <laughs> just because it's the 50th. Right. After that, somebody I'm done. else's show. Okay. All right. I, I, I'm, I, I'm washing my hands of it. Right. I mean, I'll probably end up having to go if anybody put on an H55. Right. I'd probably have to go because I'll probably still represent most of the Halloween people. But right. who knows? I could be retired by then. Who knows? I'm sure. turning 53 this month. Who knows? Oh, congratulations. Um, Happy birthday. Thanks. Um, actually, my birthday is on H45, Saturday, oh, no September 30th. <laughs> oh, shit. Okay. Um, so we'll, we, we got to celebrate somehow. That's that's good to know. I, I had to throw myself a party. Right. Exactly. Um, good for you. And of course, one that I'm going to be working my ass off at and having no fun. <laughs> right. uh, but uh, I mean, yeah, it's a Halloween convention. I mean, it's everything Halloween. And, and the one thing that's really cool about H45, I think that we didn't have so much prior is we were able to this time have enough lead time to really secure some cool exclusive items. Like mm-hmm. I know like Jason, Jason Edmondson had some exclusive prints and there was some stuff like that. We did like exclusive vinyls with Mondo, but this time dude, uh, Halloween fans bring your cash because there are so many exclusives. We're hoping that some don't fall through um, mm-hmm. because we're still, you know, we're, we're under a time crunch and, and we've already heard from a couple companies that said, there's no way the product's going to make it on time now, but they're going to take pre-orders at the show. Like okay. I'll tell you right now, a couple of them. Um, I know that, uh, what was it? See, I think Her- Hero Complex Gallery, they have one they're still hoping they're going to have in time. Sacred Bones Records has one they're really hoping they're going to have on time. Um, uh, let's see who else. I think I think there's maybe something from Fright Rags. Uh, maybe it Fright Rags. I know Fright Rags has some exclusives. They're doing an exclusive H45 pin. They're doing an exclusive H45 t-shirt. Uh, I know today they just announced the the Jamie Lee, or excuse me, Jamie Lee, the Laurie Strode and Michael Myers uh, splatter editions that are yeah. exclusive to the convention. That's awesome. Um, I, Jason Edmondson's going to have exclusive prints that are pretty awesome. Uh, trick or treat studios has an exclusive figure they're supposed to have on time for the show. Um, Archie comics has an exclusive for the show. Obviously we announced the, the Tom Atkins exclusive figure. I'll grab it. Hold on. Yeah. Let's see this thing, man. I'm, I'm super excited. I, I'm Tom Atkins is the man. So I, I'm going to end up owning this thing and, Austin, I've talked about on the show before that I am very concerned (laughs) with the fact that I'm going to be broke by the time I leave LA in another month. So this was the prototype. I'm trying to get it in. And I mean, it's pretty much going to look like this, except for the big difference is right here. It's going to have a silver shamrock sticker that says limited edition and it's numbered and printed numbers one to a thousand. So Damn. this is probably the first look of the full packaging. I don't think oh, we've seen man. shown this off. That is sweet. Yeah. I, once again, I'm gonna have to own this thing by the time I leave LA. And the I'm, best gonna, part, I'm gonna have to pack. The best part is my name is on it. <laughs> really? Oh, dude, that's sweet. That's awesome. That is super cool. 
So that yeah, so that is going to be available for for those in attendance at H forty five. Yeah, it's only available at H forty five unless we don't sell them all. But sure. based on the response, I think they're going to all sell. Yeah. Um, and I know you had some questions about the. I'll wait to to elaborate more when you ask the questions. Um, but let's see what else is there. Oh, I I just today finalized the orders for the the Tom Atkins pint glasses for the drinks with Atkins event. Okay. Also we're doing, uh, I've been talking with the Buccaneer that's, that's the bar from Halloween three and we're going to be doing a special trio shot. So it'll be three different shot glasses. You can imagine what's on those three shot glasses. Um, right. and they're going to be different colored shots, like an orange shot, a clear shot and a, or a white shot and a green shot. So get That's ready to awesome. get tanked with Tom. And, and um, when is this? When is the when is the uh, the tanked with Tom? When is the the drink with Atkins? Thing? We should change the name to Tanked with Tom. That's better. Yeah, I like that. Um, I like that. That's Sunday night after the convention. Those okay. tickets haven't gone on sale yet. Uh, it's very limited. I think it's only, I want to say, 150 people tops. Okay. Uh, and that those tickets will go on first on sale first to VIP holders, which my guess is will sell out That'll before be it hits yeah. public. Yep. Um, yep. And uh, so we'll have more information on all that stuff coming shortly. We also just added another bus to the tour. That's going to go on sale this Sunday at noon Pacific. Okay. Um, Cause those sold out. I think the, my bus sold out in three minutes. Uh, that was two buses that right. that's part of my tour. And then the regular general tours sold out. I want to say the rest of them sold out in, it was like two hours. So Damn. a lot of people awesome. have been saying they missed out on it. So we're doing one yeah. more bus, which is 54. I, it's 56 seats. So you figure a tour guide. So figure 54 seats to be safe. So there's yeah. going to be like 54 more tickets going on sale on Sunday. And then I think yeah. we're going to cap it. Cause that's six buses. And it's just, that's a lot. That's a lot. So, yeah. And this is, yeah. this is going to be Friday, right? This is like Friday starts at like 9am or something. 9am to five. Uh, okay. And uh, I think nine to six on my tour, my tour is an, an extra hour, which seems like a long time, but I'll tell you what, man, I've done it a few times and everybody says it flies by. Like you're like, yeah. like it, you're having so much fun hanging out with other like-minded fans and visiting the sites and everything. you just don't realize how quickly the time flies, you know? Right. Right. Oh, I bet. And I sitting bet. in no, that LA awesome. traffic so much fun. <laughs> oh yeah. Yeah, exactly. No, I, I, we unfortunately missed out on the, the first go around of tickets, but we're going to try to get tickets for hopefully Sunday. We're going to get on there right away and hopefully they don't, I mean, they're going to sell out right away. There's no question. It's just a matter of yeah. getting in there and, and doing it. Um, a couple other exclusives I can talk about. Um, well, they announced today, I think the Royal Bobble, uh, exclusive Myers bobblehead that's going to be yep. available at the show. Um, also universal is doing an exclusive 20th anniversary Halloween H two O poster, which the artwork is really wow. cool and it's going to only cool. be available at the show. Uh, we're talking, I was talking to Nate today and he, he's looking into getting a company, um, like a shipping company to, to have a booth at the show. So fans can actually on site have, you know, their stuff shipped. That's um, smart. That's really yeah, smart. Just Cause that's what I trying to make things as easy for people. Yeah. I mean, I, I'm almost, I mean, all jokes aside, like I'm wondering how I'm going to be able to get everything back. And that would be ultimately what I have to do is find a UPS store or something to go to and pack this stuff up and ship it home because there's no way I can fly it home or fly it home. There's with a me, target down is. the street. You can go buy an extra suitcase. <laughs> <laughs> right. I might have to, I might have to. No, that's, that's awesome. Maybe a suitcase so, so company. Suitcase company should get a booth at the show. <laughs> yeah, no kidding. Yeah. No, that's a great idea. I love the idea of having some sort of a packaging company there that you just do it right on site and ship it home and hmm. do your thing. Oh, that's awesome. Um, so we are, we're officially, I think as of, I wrote it down, as of today, we're 29 days away. Uh, are we done with guest announcements? We have more that are going to be coming. What, what can you tell us about that? 
Yeah, we're not even close to done with guests. Um, I mean, the funny thing is, you know, I've I see, you know, fans just bitch. That's what the internet is, fans bitching. And people have been complaining that the guest announcements have been slow. The funny thing is, I think we made most of our guest, guest announcements for H40 in the last month. Sure. Um, yeah. And I think we're already at the same amount of guests we had last time. We're real close. And we haven't even come close to finishing. So oh, that's awesome. There's, I, I know a bunch of guests that haven't been announced. I know a bunch of guests we're still reaching out to. Um, I know I've seen people say, you know, oh, you don't have enough people from this movie or that movie. And it's like, we're really focusing on new guests, people that have never done a convention. Um, cause I think the majority of the Halloween fans, you gotta, you gotta have, first of all, you have to have your anchors. You gotta have the, the, you know, Nick Castle, Dick Warlock, you gotta have yep. the guys, you know, there's always yep. going to be the ones you gotta have, but I want to get people that haven't done it before, you know, like here, I'll tell you one right now. We just locked in. It's her first show ever. Um, Jadine Barber who, uh, played, uh, Little Buddy's mom in uh, Halloween oh, 3. No way. Oh, dude, yeah, that is she, awesome. So she's uh, Miss Cupford. Miss Cupford. Yeah. Um, yeah. She's doing her first show ever, and Little Buddy himself is coming back. He's going to be there. I think no he's way. Sunday only. I okay. Let me double check that because I know he can only do one day. I think it was Sunday. Let me check my text from him. Hold on. Yeah. Little yeah. Buddy. <laughs> oh, buddy, dude, that's that is that is so cool, and that's what I love is is obviously Halloween th- falls into the Halloween franchise. But for those people who are big Halloween three fans, this is, I mean, this is the time to get these people to sign whatever it is, right? And I mean, sadly, we're yeah. we we could lose some of these people in the next five years before we get to age fifty. We hope not, but that is that's just the the way life is, right? So get out there and get well, these people's autograph. I mean, you know, I, I don't know for certain. I mean, well, Ralph Strait, who played Buddy Cup for. Uh, you know, the, his dad, he passed a few years, you know, years ago. So, um, so we'll never get him, but, uh, right. Let's see. Yep. Let me check real quick. I want to make sure I got the right day on little buddy for anybody who's coming to see him. He'll be there on Sunday only. Okay. Um, Sunday only. Okay. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, you know, we're just trying to get, we're trying to get new people, you know, cause like I said, I think the majority of the people that keep coming to the Halloween convention every five years, they want new people. They want new, who, who can they add to the poster? You know? Right. Like right, when we, exactly. when I finally found Brett LePage, Lonnie, which mm-hmm. to me, that's the one I'm most excited about finding oh, anyone from Halloween one at this point. Right. That right. hasn't done it. Good luck. Right. Right. So, I mean, that one's really special. I think somebody actually made a comment. They don't have enough people from the first film. It's like, who? Right. I mean, it's, there's hardly anybody in that movie, you know? Right. Exactly. <laughs> We're trying. No, not a, yeah. No, I, I, well, and kind of going back to what you're talking about before, I mean, how do you find these people? Is there like, there's gotta be almost like that thrill of the hunt trying to track down some of these people. Right. Yeah. No, that's, it's kind of like I was talking about with the location stuff. It's fun f- being the guy to find these people, you know, mm-hmm. um, yeah. <clears throat> you know, just got to go out there and just keep trying, you know, yeah, contacting that's, everybody that's awesome. you can that has the same name or, you know, I mean, I, uh, actually it was a fan, a fan found Brett. He found oh, no his kidding. daughter and, messaged me and said, I think I found Brett LePage. This is his daughter's phone number. Call her. I did. I explained to her what it was. And she right. said she didn't think her dad would be interested, but would pass the message along. And he called me and he wow. really wasn't interested. He was kind of like, ah, you know, I kind of have a whole nother life now, a su- successful right. business. Right. And I talked him into it. I'm like, dude, just try it. I think right. you're going to be surprised how passionate these fans are. And, uh, you know, yeah. nine times out of 10, somebody tries it. They get addicted. They get, they, cause it, dude, people coming up to you all weekend and telling you how great you are and handing you money. Absolutely. Come on. Yeah, right. Sign me yeah, what's up. What's better than that? Yeah. 
Right, exactly. Yeah. No, that's awesome. I know Sandy Johnson. We interviewed Sandy on this show, uh, one of our very first episodes. There's somebody who became addicted. That, that. Holy crap, she's addicted. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, <laughs> she didn't want nothing to do doing. with it. Now you right? can't keep her she, away. <laughs> right, and that's what she talked about. She I, had to, like, I, I had to no chase idea. her off my porch a half hour ago. <laughs> <laughs> that's awesome no she's uh sandy's a sweetheart obviously and, and she she talked about that like she would just had no idea that there was that there was this following for this film and these passionate fans out there and to your point now she can't get enough of it i mean you if you follow her on instagram or any social media she's constantly post posting every weekend she's someplace else yeah pump the brakes <laughs> exactly. <laughs> yeah. No, that's that's awesome. I know there were a couple other announcements today. We got Tom Jones Jr., who was obviously played Dr. Loomis in the flashback scene yeah. in Halloween Kills. Super excited to meet him. Um, sounds like he's a pretty cool guy. Steve Miner, which is badass as hell. Like I I, I want to meet yeah. Steve for sure, the director of Halloween H2O, and then Adrian Barbeau, which I think is a great little touch because she was only in the if I remember correctly, the Rob Zombie's Halloween DVD. If, is that is that yeah. accurate? Is that accurate? The director's but, cut, an, yeah, like yeah, the director's cut, yeah. But what a great addition to this thing, and she'll be a well. Huge I thought it, you know, she's local, and let's face it, most people are gonna want to get her for other things. So oh, yeah. she had to be part of the Halloween universe to add her. And I yeah. felt like with Nancy Loomis there, Charles Cyphers, uh, Tom Atkins, you know, you have a little fog reunion, you know. Absolutely, so, no, absolutely. you know, why not? No, that's that's awesome. Yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I've never met her. I've been to a lot of conventions and I've unfortunately never been to a convention that she's at and she's a hundred percent going to be at the top of my list for somebody that I want to meet. Um, just and she's doing Saturday only. Okay. She's doing Saturday only so Saturday. Okay. Awesome. Awesome. So are you anticipating then? I mean, th there's no question. This is going to be bigger than age 40. Is that, is that right? Based on vendor sales and ticket sales. Yes. Because uh, we've already exceeded where we were be way beyond at this point uh, in H40. Sure. So, sure. Okay. No, that, that's awesome. And, uh, you know, like Sean Which said, is shocking I mean, because, to be honest with you, we had a huge, we had huge momentum for H40 because the new movie opened that movie. weekend. And there was all this hype, Jamie coming yeah. back, uh, you know, all this new promotional stuff everywhere. I kind of felt like coming off of Halloween ends, which a lot of people felt was a disappointment that our momentum would have went roof, but sure. it, it's, it's higher this time. It's kind of crazy. So that's awesome. Yeah. Cause VIP sold out in what, I mean, it was like almost instantly. Right. I mean, it was the tickets. were. Yeah. Gone. In fact, they, it, it oversold a little bit. Like they, oh, they ended yeah. up selling more than they wanted to. Which is great for those right. VIPs, but yeah, you know. absolutely. No, exactly. No, I, that's awesome. I, I love the fact that we're going to get more guest announcements. I'm sure there's going to be more announcements that are just going to be made over the next, what I say, 29 days. I think we're at here. So um, yeah, I mean, there's cool. still, we're, we're, there's some guests we're still waiting for answers from. Um, we're still trying to reach out to people. Um, you know, it's, I, honestly we could just stop right now and the show would be great oh, but we're dude, still absolutely. we're still peppering in more you know yeah no that's awesome i think you know it's it's kind of sad because you're right i think there's a lot of people who just bitch just a bitch and they're you know they want to oh, complain because yeah. there's not enough of this or that but as a halloween fan dude i am so stoked this is my first halloween convention that i'm going to so i am stoked to just even be in the room with all of these people and uh you know my my hope is is that everybody uh you know behaves themselves and is respectful and everything like that which i'm sure they will oh, yeah. be but i am i'm just super excited man it's it's gonna be a hell of a show yeah, it, I think it's funny. I think most of the people that bitch online aren't even coming, you know, they just, Probably. you know, it, 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 it's, it, you tend, it, it tends to be kind of the pattern that those people aren't even actual attendees. They're just right. online trolls. You know, I've, yeah. I've seen some funny, funny posts that make me laugh and it's like, you know whatever dude we're doing we're doing it right. regardless and it, and it's gonna right. be it's gonna be a big success so i mean like i said we could stop right now and be fine every guest we add to the show adds expense for us and, mm -hmm. and we're okay with that because we're doing it for the fans right. you know i mean right yep. it, that's what yep. it's about is trying to create the biggest and best we can 
you know, I mean, there's a, you know, there's, I don't want, I'm not trying to say, uh, there are guests I don't want there, but there are guests that have kind of overstayed their welcome on the circuit, so to speak, that it's like, I would rather fill that spot with somebody the fans have never met. You know what I mean? Sure. I get I it. Mean, yeah. Yeah. I mean, you could say, oh, well, Nick Castle's overstayed his welcome as well. It was fucking Nick Castle. I mean, Nick Castle, the guy exactly. has a line around the building every time. So, <laughs> right, uh, right. of course, of course he's going to be there. You know, I mean, yeah. it's yeah. like Kane Hodder's yeah. at every convention I go to and he always has a line because he's popular. Exactly. Yep. But exactly. victim it's number popular. eight from movie number seven, not so much. You know? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, I get it. I, I totally get it. And I think that I think the thing is at the end of the day, this is like you said, it's a convention for the fans. And it's the only franchise out there that's doing anything like this to this scale, right? I mean, this is huge. This is beyond anything else that any of the other major franchises um have been able to yeah. do. And I'm just I, I'm in love with the idea and I can't wait to get out there obviously at the end of the month and and get to meet. Obviously, the other thing is I like really, minded fans too. I really feel that the Halloween fan base is the biggest and most dedicated because right. you don't see Elm street conventions. You don't, there was one Friday 13th convention. There was a 25th convention. I went to it and it was kind of a flop and it's like, sure. why is that? Why is that? You know, yep. I mean, if you had an Elm street convention, you can't do it without Robert England. He's the guy No, where, yeah. where Halloween there's, tons of Myers, you know, for Jason's yep. there are tons of Jason's, but why doesn't the Friday 13th convention work? It doesn't have yeah. the passionate yeah. fan base. Halloween has, it just doesn't. Right. Right. There's yep. something unique true. about Halloween. Yep. And, and that's what I mean. I think to just be surrounded even just with, by like-minded fans, people who, you know, you're not getting just average fans of this, the, this series to these conventions. You're getting people who are spending a shit ton of money to fly to LA and to spend paychecks there to buy their favorite whatever, right? Or meet their favorite. Dude, we get guests. people from Japan, Australia, Germany, right. uh, you know, Europe, all over Europe, uh, London, you know, um, Spain. Right. They're coming from everywhere, Canada. That's it's awesome. it's nuts, so dude. Cool. I mean, it, it's it's. Right. I would say, I would say probably at the show, sixty percent of the attendees are from out of town. Maybe even more. Okay. I believe yeah. it. That's yeah, I it's believe people it. travel for this one. Absolutely. That's we've had some some people who watch this show who've reached out to us who've said, Hey, we're we're coming from you know Jacksonville or we're coming from Austin, Texas, or we're coming from New York or wherever it might be. And and Canada. That's that's we've gotten a lot of uh, several Canadians who've said, Hey, we're coming to the show. We want to meet meet up. And that's what's so cool is this is a it's an international, you know, draw, which is so cool. Yeah. It's awesome. Yeah. Now, Sean, before I before I let you go, it would be right unless I asked you what is your favorite Halloween movie of the entire franchise. Actually, give me your top three, and it doesn't have to be you know any detail, but give me your top three. What are your favorite? One, two, three, in that that's order. Easy enough, man. Okay, yeah. Awesome. I love it. I love it. No, that's yeah. that's cool. And and probably, I mean, you you probably did you see the original Halloween? about the time that it came out or maybe a little bit after or what, when was the first time that you saw the original 78? I saw the original 78 out the back window of my parents' car at a drive-in oh, theater. They were seeing another movie and I was trying to watch Halloween on the other screen because I had oh seen God. the commercial and it freaked me out. And to be honest with you, to, to watch it without sound was even freakier. Right. <laughs> yeah, I bet. I bet. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic story I mean, what a way that to was the first time i saw it first time so oh, that's freaking sweet man. the rest that's of awesome. them i saw in the theater went the when they opened i went you know um part two i saw in the theater twice the first time my aunt robin took me and it was on a double feature with the fun house and oh, then the sweet. second time i saw it was a double feature with an american werewolf in london oh Dude, yeah. those are two bangers. That's awesome. Yeah, no, the, and then the third, the third one, I remember Brookhurst Lodge Theater. My aunt Robin took me, and I sat there confused, trying to figure out if we <laughs> went into the wrong movie because right. I'm like, I don't right. get this. Where's Michael Myers? You know, yeah. I, I, yeah. obviously, just like everybody else, took me a while to appreciate, but at the time, I was, 
I was confused. You know, right. you were you were one of many scratching your head, going, "What the hell's going on here?" Yeah, that's awesome. And then that's I awesome. saw part they'll, they'll... four, Highway Thirty Nine Drive In, the same drive in. I saw part one out the back window, okay. um, and that was on a double feature with Hellraiser Two. Oh wow! Okay, very yeah. cool. Very cool. Those are I, I drove mean, those to that awesome one. Memories. I was old enough to drive yeah. to that one. Yeah. Yeah, that's awesome. That is so cool. Sean, uh, where can people find you at and where can they find out more information about Halloween 45 Years of Terror? Um, well, shoot. I think it's, I don't know what the, the website for, uh, is it H45 Convention? I think is what it you is. Know, <laughs> I don't even that's know. That's a great question. I'll be honest. I get all my info from Instagram, which is just official Halloween movies, uh, I believe is, is the H- official. Uh, I think, um, mention oh i just want on to instagram sure. you can, i, you I can don't really go to the website yeah that's all right so on instagram you can yeah. definitely uh find out more information on official halloween movies if you look that up on instagram you can get some info there which is where i get all my info from yeah it looks like it's h45convention.com there you go okay h45convention.com obviously tickets still available oh wait no that's not it that's not Uh-oh. it Sorry. It's not like some triple X <laughs> porno site, is it? I don't know. I, I just, if you Google H45 convention, it, it's Horror Hound Weekend. It's the it links into Horror Hound Weekend. So, right. Okay. All right. If you go to horrorhoundweekend.com, I'm sure you can find out H45 info. But as far as my info on YouTube, on Twitter, which not, it's what is it called now? It's not Twitter anymore. X, I believe. X, X isn't it? Yeah, just X. Like yeah. Um, Instagram, it's at Malfunction. So, okay, yeah. awesome, Sean All Clark, ladies shit. and gentlemen. Yeah, thank you. Sean, Don't we have so the questions? The program. Uh, do Do you want Do you want questions? Because we we have. Well, you we, ha- you I, sent me a list of questions. I've been waiting for you to answer them. Ask them. <laughs> um, uh, well, it, it's entirely up to you. We can we can keep going. Uh, you know, with this, I've I've got. Let's run through the questions. Of, well, they're, they're I, I purposely more... didn't talk about certain things because I knew they were in the questions. Well, how about this? Let's let's have you let's have you just run down what you do want to talk about, and I'll ask you questions. I'm good. I'm done with what I want to talk about. Just ask okay, the questions. Right. Well, <laughs> well, they're they're kind of some more of like uh, they're sort of would you rather questions is is kind of I don't care with it. So a little little bit of fun, kind of fun to end the show here. So, uh, Sean, would you rather be killed on screen by Michael, Jason, Freddie, or Leatherface, and why? Wait, these aren't the questions. Didn't you send me a list of questions? No, I didn't say no. I, I've just I have a I have a list of questions here that I have for you, but I didn't send you any questions. You oh, must be so popular that you're getting you know what? Confused with I think there's another I'm podcast I'm supposed to do, and they sent me a list of questions. Oh, uh, see, they're way more prepared than I was. I, I do have I do have a list of okay. questions here, but but let's okay. let's that's cool. But let's still roll with the the would okay. you rather? Would you rather be killed by Michael, Jason, Freddie, or Leatherface on screen? Neither. <laughs> oh, on screen. Oh, yeah, on screen. <laughs> on screen. Yes, on screen. Okay. Um, yeah, Michael, Michael. Jason, Freddie. Of course, okay. Michael. Obviously, right? Yeah, he's yeah. He's, he's the king. So yeah. uh, I didn't. We we didn't talk about the original hero mask, but I I do want to say this one. So, would you rather own the original hero mask in its current state and have to give up your top three favorite pieces, or would you rather keep your top three favorite pieces and not have the hero mask? I'll keep my top three pieces. That hero mask is right. trashed. It's in tough shape, man. It's in, I haven't seen yeah. any photos since they were released a few years ago, but it is, yeah, it's in tough shape. I mean, if it looked that, that bad back then, I can't imagine what it looks like now. Yeah. Have you ever talked to the owner? Have you ever, have you ever talked to him at all? Nope. No. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's very interesting. I, I, it's, it's cool that he has it, but I wish we could see it. You know what I mean? And then, cause it's just going to get shittier and more deteriorated as the years go on. So be nice. I'm shocked he released that photo. Yeah. No. Yeah. No, I, I am too. Uh, okay. So then the next one, and this is probably going to be very easy, but would you rather have more Halloween sequels, but never another Friday the 13th sequel or more Friday the 13th sequel and never another Halloween sequel? Hmm. I don't know. I mean, because I really don't need either. Um, sure. <laughs> sure. I, I guess I'll just have to say more Halloween just because that's my thing. But 
but it's been so long since the Friday the 13th movie. I, I kind of would be more excited for one of those right now, you know? Right. Right. No, I get it. We've obviously got, obviously have the, the crystal Lake TV series that hopefully is going to be coming out at some point. Yeah. Um, that'll be interesting to see what happens there. And you know, that kind of goes into, you know, Halloween 45 years of terror, as far as like we hear, there might be some big announcements. Who knows what that is going to look like? Maybe a TV series, maybe more movies, whatever. Do you have a, a preference of where you'd like to see this series go? If anywhere, I guess. Um, Well, I mean, I I think the ultimate would have been what they did in Halloween Kills with the flashback stuff if they had done an all-period sequel. So it all took place, you know, at that time in that time period. Something like that would have been really cool. Um Right. I guess now it's I mean, how many different storylines you have going? I mean, it's. It, it, I think at this point you've kind of exhausted it, and a, a TV series, kind of like the Crystal Lake thing, might not be a bad uh, way to go. Either way, there's no way Halloween ends as the last Michael Myers film. There's no way. I mean, it's. It. it I've said this a thousand times. But like Michael Myers is like Dracula, Frankenstein, the Wolfman. It'll keep going long before, you know, long after I'm dead. They'll still right. be making Halloween movies. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. You know, I, I don't know. I don't, I don't know where you take it at this point. I mean, I had a really cool idea for a sequel to H2O, um, which I still love, but, uh, you know, I think that that ship is long sailed. <laughs> so, sure. Yeah. And I yeah. don't care about well, the, the thorn, the thorn timeline. I I could, I don't want to see any sequels to that crap. I'm, I'm sure. I, I no, no offense. I, the four, five, and six, I mean, four has its moments, but I'm not, I'm not really interested in, not a fan. In, I mean, not to see it continue. There's a nostalgic sure. part of me that looks back at those movies and has a certain feeling, but they're pretty terrible. I mean, to be honest with you, and then sure. they're not that good. But yeah, there's it, things I like of, about them. Halloween, the fran- you know, the franchise has kind of become a little bit of a choose your own adventure, right? And it's very totally. almost reminiscent of what maybe the original idea was, was that it was going to be this anthology and these different stories. And in a way, that's kind of what's happened is we've got these these choose your own adventure movies and you kind of get to pick your timeline and, and whatever. Um, but I agree with you 100 percent that this is not the last of Michael Myers. Him getting made into dog food is not the last we'll see of him on the big screen. At some point, Michael's going to come back, right? Yeah, well, I mean, that's the last you'll see of that trilogy. Right. You know, but it'll get its own reboot again of some sort, you know, um, just like we have the Rob zombie two films. You have the David, uh, David Gordon green trilogy. There'll be something else. You know, I I saw people, I I don't know how many people, but some people were, you know, wanting the Jamie Lloyd story to continue or whatever. and, And, no interest in that. Interested. Plus, she died in, in part six. Right. So, right. you know, yeah, but I guess, oh, no, no, you magic. can do what they did with Lori Strode and part six didn't exist. Right. And no, <laughs> right. No, thanks. Right. That's some direct to video fan made shit right there. (laughs) Yeah, no, and I don't think anybody wants that. I don't, I don't really want direct to to video. Nobody's, nobody's looking for that. Let's keep Michael on the big screen and, and keep him there. Yeah. Yeah. Don't, don't ruin those characters any more than they need to be. You know? Right. Yep. Oh, yeah. Sean, my friend, we are out of time. I cannot thank you enough once again for coming on the show, dude. I am so excited to come out to Halloween 45 at the end of the month. Hopefully I run into you. If I do, I'll shake your hand and say hi. Um, and Definitely. Uh, anything, any, any last words you want to say to anybody watching? Uh, just get ready. Bring cash. ATM machines run out. <laughs> a lot, of, a lot of the vendors only take cash. A lot of the celebrities only take cash. So I would say, be prepared, bring a lot of spare cash because 
you don't want to be you know standing in that line for that exclusive and walk up with your card and them to tell you sorry man it's cash only no no boy no that wouldn't be so, any good yep exactly you don't want to miss oh. out on this i know dude i'm gonna have one of those it's gonna be sitting in the background here in another month that's sweet <laughs> that is very cool thank you sean for all the exclusives you gave us obviously for this show you guys are going to see this special episode up uh very soon and uh we will see you out at halloween 45 this is going to be the latest episode of halloween lives a podcast with michael myers that's our friend sean clark thank you so much for coming on the show and guys we'll see you next time